Hello! Welcome back to another edition of Classic Model Trains. I'm Ron. This is part two of our Lionel L F3 2345 series. The restoration, the rescue, the fixing. If you're watching this and you didn't see part one, well, I'll put a I'll put one of them things up to it over here. Go and check that one out first. This one here, well, we've already done the chassis, cleaned them up. We've already done the trucks, cleaned them up, re-lubed them, installed them. Today's video is focusing on the electrics. We're going to take the motors, disassemble them, get them cleaned up, get them back in, finish off these locomotives, and get them running right. Well, get them, get them running. It already ran, but we're going to make them look really pretty. You notice that I'm not in my, in my normal garb. I've, I've got some different garb on right now. Billings, we've only got like 100,000 people in the, in the town. Maybe 130 if you go with a 30 mile radius. We've got two hobby shops in town. I, I know. And there's major metropolitan areas. They don't have any. It doesn't make any sense to me, but hey, I'm happy to be living here. Well, one of them focuses mostly on, on HO and they got a new owner here a while back. And I was showing up there to buy some stuff. They had a sign on the window that says, they're looking for help. I went in there and I'll be, I'll be, they, they, had, they took me on. They hired me on. This I just got done with my first shift today. 14-year-old uh, me, I, he'd be so happy right now. I, I'm pretty happy too. Got off and I had, to, I had to get the daylight to do the outdoor shots of this thing running around. So I didn't change. I'd show off my new haircut, I guess. I did some Googling. I found one of these F3 wiring schematics for you guys out there that like to look at these, have the ability to know what the heck it says. These are awfully helpful if you're trying to diagnose some problems that you're that you're working on, you know, or you can Google it or you can pause this and, and, and put it to memory. Well, let's get into the, uh, let's get into getting these motors taken apart, cleaned up, put back in, get this video going. Well, here's our electrics as they come out of it. Two motors, this is the reverse lockout. They say it's a three position, but I got to see only two positions um, not connected and connected and then the horn relay right here i'd hoped that these motors came apart more than it appears like they do and i've been staring at them and i looked at this here illustrated parts breakdown of a of a motor just like these there's not there's not a lot a guy can do what i'm most worried about is the fact that you can't get the motor armature out of here because this right here is the end of the motor armature and this gear is pressed on to the armature shaft this gears pressed in and there ain't no way to get inside here you can see all this scub inside here this is all really dried up grease right there and i want to get that all out of there to clean that up and get this re-oiled re-greased here looks like this would be a service port for putting some oil in i see in the old days a lot of guys just used uh, motor oil 1030 some guys use 2050. Uh, you know, they didn't use anything real fancy, which of course makes sense because these don't have plastic gears or nylon gears in them. They, they're pretty substantial. Two bolts back here to take the end of this motor off. I'd call it the brush holder. Very, very small little nut right there. Another little fella right there. Pull the end of this off. We're gonna get our brushes out. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's about it. These studs right here, they're uh, riveted in to the other end of this motor housing right up in this area. And there's just not much more a guy can take apart on these. If you do break these little fellers right here somewhere along the line, there is a kit out there to replace them. A guy can also get new brush springs and brushes. I really want to put this part in the hydrosonic cleaner. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up something to hold this up, only this portion from here down is going to be in the cleaning solution, and this is going to remain safe and secure up above, and I'm going to keep an eye on it. Because I want to, I mean, the grease in here is so thick that it's actually just, it's formed around these gears. Th this thing has got so much scub in it. It just seems like a guy wants to do everything he can to try to clean that out as much as possible. I twisted this thing around enough that I broke the little wire off. But that's okay, I can solder it back on. I'll hand wash this out with some Q-tips and some mineral spirits. Try to clean the grease off of it. Once this one here is successfully completed, 
course, I'll do the same to this one, but I'll do it off camera because, you know, this is just completely exact same. Once we show, once we go through it once, we'll have it. Well, this is what I've come up with. I've got my measuring cup in there that I use for scenery, and I'm going to, I'm going to hold this little bugger in like this. And I just put this in, the water's 104, this isn't, so I'm gonna let this warm up to the temperature of the water, because the heat, of course, will help clean this out. My first idea, gotta, gotta start somewhere, see how this works. Putting this motor in the ultrasonic cleaner took a lot longer than I had thought. That grease in there was, was so hard, I'd have to put it in for about seven minutes, and then I'd have to scrape it out, and it came out like mud, stuck on the end of a toothbrush. It was just packed in there so bad. Put it back in, to kind of do this again until I finally got down to where it's super clean. So here's, this is the clean one. This is the one I haven't done anything with at all. Now I know this has done a lot of good because I can take the armature and it just spins, spins like a dream. That's what I'm talking about right there. I cleaned the commutator off with one of these little fellers. This one it seems to work really good on this one. Then of course some Q-tips and some odorless mineral spirits. And I try to clean up everything around in this area, everything just all, all over, just to get it cleaned up. Now, here's the brush holder. And I wanted to show you this when I started working on one side. Now, I can't imagine why there'd be so much oil up in this area. As I was sitting around waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner to do my work for me, I was looking at this brush holder. I'm like, where the hell's the bushing at? You know, because I was looking for a thrust washer, of course. You can see that this rotor, it's being held in by a bearing right there. And there's probably another bearing that's right here behind this gear. So this is completely set up. You know, it's self-contained at this end. And I believe that when this was on, there was somebody that was probably trying to put oil down in there, which, you know, I'm just guessing, that would put this kind of filth in this brush holder. So I was kind of cleaning this off camera a little bit, but then when I seen how filthy it was, it's like, well, I'm gonna share that with everybody. That is, that's really bad. One thing I also wanted to mention, you see these brush holders here, they're like a, I don't know, like a can right here. The, the, the spring isn't providing the electrical path. It's this brass, funny shaped, U-shaped thing with a can on the end of it. So when you're cleaning these, make sure you get the the can portion clean without getting your Q-tip stuck all over the spring. I'll dig that out. And also clean your brushes. Since this one was obviously contaminated by petroleum, a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and get these cleaned up, get that oil off there. And then also, of course, the very end, clean the armature. If you clean the commutator, you also gotta clean your brushes if you want everything to work just like it's supposed to. Lots of cleaning to get these motors optimum. These brushes have a little line down the end of them, and those have got to line up with the brush spring inside there. So once you get these in, you know, get them, get them rotated around so that the brush spring and the line is all lined up. Scared to me. Oh, look at that. Worked out pretty good. Put these little fellers back on. This motor here, cleaned. Don't get all crazy. Tighten these down. This is Bakelite right here. It's good, but it's brittle. Just a little snuggin'. Also, I want to point out, I, I didn't do that. Ugh. Ugh. Goodness. Wow. Mm -hmm. Something I've been having a little fun with, classic model trains. How about this week's classic model? You guys know who, who this one is? If you do, type it in the comments down below. We are getting super close to reinstalling all these things here. Now it's a great time to get these motors lubed up. This hole right here, well, I was being, I figured it, you know, it probably oiled. This main commutator shaft that comes through here, you know, I was hoping somehow some oil would get down to this idler. Cause you know, if a guy's gonna dream, dream big. And I was spraying some cleaner down through here. And it also started coming out these holes right here, which are of course right above these trucks. So it looks like when this assembly is assembled, you can oil this and, you know, in my perfect dream of people are awesome and engineers are our friends, this is going to oil this upper shaft, the lower shaft, the trucks, 
all that. The maintenance on this thing, if I'm right, is amazing. Just a couple drops, three in one oil, 1030, whatever. Give it, give it some love. Now these open gears, of course, they're gonna have to be greased. And to start off, since this thing has just been completely clean, maybe I'm just gonna try, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get any down for this commutator bushing that is up in here. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution. I'm gonna see if I can try to get some work down just from here, because I'm you know, pretty sure it doesn't have rubber seals on it and all that fun stuff. This feller, try to give him some oil on the inside of that. Put some oil down in this. I'm hoping that it goes somewhere and does something creative. Back to our synthetic multi-purpose grease. Roll this motor over, try to get it on the gears. I seem to have it about everywhere but the gears. And of course when you do this, it'll transfer. I don't want a whole bunch extra. I know that this one goes on the front because I remembered it when I took it apart. So we'll put this little lovey right here. Just snug them, don't get crazy, yeah? So, oh, sure. This rear one had a spring right there. Couple screws for this one. Just a gentle snugging. Now we have our three position E unit. I'm still working on three position. Maybe it's position one, full functional. One, lock into forward. One, lock into reverse. Because, you know, of the way that it, that it works. This is an electromagnet right here. Pulls up this pipe right here, which will cause this little switcher to switch. And there's pulls down here. So every time this guy pulls up, this drum rotates. And on the back side of the unit, buried deep, deep down inside there, there's fingers down in there. And what these are doing is they're reversing the polarity of the stator electromagnet, and then it's also reversing the polarity of the two brushes. Because that's what you have to do with, with AC, because it doesn't, you know, it flows both directions back and forth at 60 times a second. So that's what these, these uh, E units are doing. Now I went through and I cleaned this one up because you could get to it really good from here. And I used some of my mineral spirits and I cleaned all the grease and the oil off these commutators. And you can manually turn this by just doing this. Hold down, give it a scrubbing, pull it up, give it another scrubbing. And then eventually I went in there with this. I, I stuck the thing out a long way so I could get to this part because, you know, contacts out here and there's a contact kind of buried up inside there. So everybody's got to be clean. Now these fingers, as I looked and looked and looked at them down there, there's just absolutely no way you can get in there. You know, this, this bottom piece is riveted together. Uh, so you can't remove it because you can see that plate sitting right here. Nope, nope, you can't get in there. So the best I can do is clean up this portion of it right here. Remember this stuff right here? Well, I'm gonna put some of that on that rotator in there, on this drum. And I'm gonna hope that this stuff here does what they say it does, and it leaves like a protective coating on there to keep the corrosion from, from doing the corroding. Make sure I get it all the way around on this thing. Every connection in there all the way around the drum, yeah. I think we've got that. And some might transfer onto those fingers, I'm hoping. There's lots of things that move in this. You can see this pin here is going up and down. This cylinder right inside here, it's moving up and down. I'm gonna give this just a little, little, little taste. These are little parts now, so we're not gonna go crazy on them. Give a little bit over here, a little bit on this drum to make it turn just as easy as possible. And then on this pin on the side here, just to help this whole process along. So, I mean, it was pretty free when I got to it, but it, it feels better now. Put this back into operate mode. One screw holding this unit in, it's gonna go right there. Give it a tightening, oh yeah. Our unit's mounted. One machine screw hanging out over here, holding this wiring from flopping in the breeze. Now this horn relay, it's just an electromagnet. It doesn't have a shaft that moves up and down a plunger. All it's going to do is pull this plate up, which closes these points right here, connects the current for the battery to provide power for the horn. 1.5 volts comes from the battery. And this 
picks up the DC rectified voltage that comes up the rails from the transformer, which closes this. Now there ain't there ain't a whole lot I can do. I clean this up. You know, we can give it just a little touch of oil back over here. Once it's all assembled, I guess I can look at it and see if it cleans. Some real fine emery paper you can get in there and clean these points. Even a simple piece of paper, I believe, would probably work because they, they'll arc, you know, every now and then. Just a little something to help them out there. See, you can see that scub that's in there. These points, they, they sometimes have a tendency not to close very tight. And they need good good gripping to, to make that 1.5 volts flow. You can take and bend these little guys so that they are, you know, you know that there's sufficient closing taking place. That would be a benefit. This fish paper, it lived under here. This is, for some reason, it's isolated from the chassis. Get some screws in. This screw on this side here, which is providing a, a ground for this electrical contact, you put the insulating washer underneath the screw. We'll get these two power wires hooked back up in this little neck of the woods here. Now I haven't hooked up these coil wires right here because I want to I want to test the the E unit and I don't want to have to hold on to this thing and flip it back and forth. Got the test transformer hooked up and it's doing what I want. Here's those two wires that are not hooked up to the electromagnetic stator so the thing won't actually move. I'm checking operation of the E unit and the horn. I wish this wasn't so loud. You know, that makes a lot of noise just on its own. The horn, oh yeah, you can see that relay right there. Opening and closing. Now if the horn that's missing will bolt on right here, it's called a high bracket horn. One wire is gonna come up and it's gonna solder on to this feller, let me get this camera out of the way. This feller right there. That's the one that's gonna make the juice coming from the battery. Because I think that the top of the battery is gonna energize this positively. And that's why this is insulated from the chassis with the fish paper and then the insulated washers. And then the bottom of the battery, the negative of course, is just going through the, the, cha the chassis ground. So everything on this is working as I expect. Light, new light bulb put in it. Mm, 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 mm. We are almost ready to run this thing. We solder these guys up right here and right here. Oh yeah, a lot more crisper. Sure. Guess what we'll do is we'll get that body put back on. I'll get my, my test track set up. It's only 12 feet long, which doesn't do this this thing much justice. But that's all I got. I don't, I don't have an old gauge layout. I like to open her up and just let her run circles, like a 40 foot diameter circle for half an hour is what I like to see, but uh, you know what they say, you in one hand and wish in the other and see which one fills up first. I was a little disappointed in the fact that I when I took that body shell off, that there was no 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 horn in there. Because I did have the foresight to buy one of these right here. This is one of those battery eliminators. So you don't have to worry about forgetting to leave the D battery in there and have it explode on you. This is supposed to replace it. Well, I, I was going to, of course, install this on this video, but I don't have a horn. So I'm going to get a horn. And then I suppose there'll be a, a video coming up here after, after a couple months about installing the horn and this this battery replacement device here with the, the you get these on eBay so let's take this thing outside let's see how good she looks how good she runs
that that came out really nice. I am very happy with this antique store purchase. I found these things waiting for me to show up and, and rescue them from, from the store. I want to thank all you guys out there for watching. This part two, this video, it launched on December 10th. Uh, December 12th is my channel's one year being on YouTube. Best year I've ever had. Been getting to know all these great people. I'm just glad that you guys like my personality. You like what I'm putting out. Thanks so much. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains. Bye-bye.